Aloha and Shalom. I'm here to do the full moon activation. Separating my cards here. Sitting in nature, we'll have some guests with us today. There will be some birds and butterflies, some bees, and who knows who else might join us. So I'm just separating my major arcanum from the minor arcanum. The major cards from the minor cards. Just waiting for you all to tune in to join me for this activation. So the full moon is technically going to be somewhere around 3 a.m. or something, but it's quite full right now and I won't be coming on in the middle of the night to do an activation. So right now is the best time for us to prepare for the full moon. And for those of you who've never seen these activations before, I just want to be clear on one thing. This activation doesn't actually have anything to do with the moon. I use the moon as a measure of time only because the moon is the easiest way for us to unite um, four times during the monthly cycle for the activation. So it's not about the moon. The moon is just a measure of time. So the full moon or full light archetypal activation is always about coming toward the end of the cycle. We're not at the end yet, but we're at the point where we see the fullness of the picture. We have all the details, we have all the information, and it's time to let that sink in and integrate from now until next week for the final quarter activation. So what have we learned this cycle? Last week, we had the wheel as the main card. So what newness have we stepped into? How can we refine our process right now with everything we've just learned? So go ahead and let go of whatever thoughts you've been carrying today or this week or even this month. Maybe thoughts you've been carrying a long, long time. Let go of any emotions you've been feeling that you just can't shake. However positive or negative, doesn't matter. Just create an empty space right now. Because if we're filled, if we're so full already with information, feelings, and ideas, we can't possibly have a space for this wisdom to enter. So to meet in the best place, we can meet in the heart space, where that space is infinite. I'll meet you there, here, now. When you feel that you're in that space, go ahead and connect to the deck however you know how. Just use your imagination so you can see a thread of light going from your third eye to the deck or you can see a rainbow stream going from anywhere on your body or being, maybe from your aura to the deck. And now that we're all together here in this infinite space of the heart, energies interwoven in the deck, we're ready to begin. <sighs> what is the main energy operating behind all the details of our lives right now? What's the one that we need to look at today and say, okay, I'm ready to integrate this lesson, I'm ready to really let it sink in. What's the best way I can do this today and in this time of this Scorpio full moon? How can I best handle the incoming energies right now? Okay, so 
So from the major arcanum, the energy operating behind the details of our lives right now is the sun. And the sun can look like many things. It can look like shining your ego out into the world in a way that is positive or negative. It can look like, look at me, look at me. This is my best self that I'm showing to the world. And maybe in your eyes, that's how you see it. But maybe the rest of the world doesn't see it that way. Or maybe it's your ego in service of the soul and it's shining out in, in a most beautiful way that can be felt and seen by those around you. After the sun, 19, comes 20, the sarcophagus or judgment. When you look to the surrounding cards, it often gives you hints as to what's going on right now. So if judgment is on its way, how we can see it is like this. What are we shining right now? How are we shining? What do we feel are our best traits? And are we actually shining those traits? And are we using them to better the world? Are we shining our light for unselfish reasons? We can begin now to judge from a right perspective our own illumination. We can begin to understand as we shine our light and reflect upon that light who we really are and what we really wish to give to the world, to radiate out to the world. We can begin to ask ourselves now, what does this light look like that I've been shining? What is the quality of this light? There's an eagle flying over my head right now. What is the quality of this light? How pure is it? How helpful is it to the world? How much of this light is my soul shining through? And how much is it maybe just false illumination? What comes before the sun is the moon. The moon can either be a sign for us to reflect upon the light that is inside, the light of the soul, or it can be a light of deception. So however we handle that moon before we come to the sun, will determine what kind of light we're shining, what the quality of the light we're shining is. That light is meant to be the light of our soul shining through us. The sun works for the moon and the moon works for the sun. So right now it looks like we're all collectively being given this chance to shine. We're feeling more extroverted maybe. Feeling like we're coming out of our shell. I know here, you know, in Sedona, Arizona, it's hot hotter than it usually is this time of year and the sun is bright and people are coming out of their homes and stores and restaurants and things are starting to open again. So perhaps despite the season, wherever you're watching from, you can feel this too. The world starting to come out again, starting to shine a little more brightly, starting to just come out of this darkness just a little bit. So we can relate this to our individual selves and we can also relate this to, to the collective. We can ask, how are we coming out of this global crisis right now? What kind of light are we bringing into the world as we re-emerge? How can we bring the highest quality light as the expression of our soul? So we're starting to come out of our shell now, individually and collectively. Globally, we're starting to be a little, little less afraid, come out of our shell. We're at least considering what it's gonna look like as we re-emerge from our homes and from quarantine and from this crisis. We're starting to conceive of what that's gonna be like. Some people, like I said, have already come out and they're feeling that. And they already have material to reflect upon, self-reflection. They already can see in what ways they're operating newly out in the world and with others. And like I said, others have not reemerged yet. But regardless, we can all think, how can I step back into the world shining my fullest light? We had to see that now conceive of it now so that when we manifest it, when we actualize it, 
that manifestation matches what we have consciously chosen to seed in our minds. Let's really consider this and not just let life happen to us. The wheel was the card last week and that's all about controlling your own fortune, understanding that there are cycles and seasons within nature, within the universe. And if we align with those cycles, we can control our fate for better or for worse. So how can we remember that now at, at this time of the full moon within this same cycle, relating to last week's reading, how can we now control our fate, control our good fortune, guide our destiny as best as we can by right now conceiving of what it's going to look and feel like when we bring our highest light and radiance back into the world. So let's see what minor Arcanum card was pulled with this one. Knight of Cups. So the Knight of Cups is going to be our helper as we re-emerge into the world. I've got some leaves stuck to me here. <laughs> so as we re-emerge into the world, the Knight of Cups is going to be the one who will guide our way to shining our truest and highest radiance outward. The Knight of Cups is the fire of water. It's acting on the heart. The Knights, or also known as horsemen, are uh, related to our thoughts. Here I see positive thoughts of love and expression of emotion. So you can kind of see this as the Knight of Cups is telling us to think on thoughts of love, romance, the heart, emotions, bring the heart into our expression as we shine our light into the world when we re-emerge. He's saying, don't come back into the world with your bullshit. No. Come back into this world, letting your heart lead the way. Allow your heart to guide your thoughts, to guide your mental processes. The heart is always the one that leads the way before the king is the queen. Because we have to get in touch with the heart center before we act. Because when we act, the heart has to lead the way. Do y'all know the famous picture of Jesus crowning Mary? There's a lot of symbolism in that picture, of course, and this is to say that the heart really wears the crown. And both of the archetypes live within each person, each one. So each of us have this duty, this responsibility to remember the heart's truth and allow it to guide the way. So this Knight of Cups is telling us don't you dare come back into this world thinking you're almighty with your ego. Don't do it. Let the heart lead the way to your truest radiance so that when you shine that light out to the world, like the sun, you will nourish all that witnesses your light, all that experiences your light. The sun nourishes all of life. It vivifies all of life, and that's why we are here to do the same thing. And our soul knows the way. The heart is the compass. So this Scorpio full moon, and relating it also to some mystic Judaism, which you all seem to really enjoy, um, we just had, uh, for last Shabbat, this, the Torah story that we're up to right now, was already mentioning Yom Kippur, which is not until the fall. And so I wrote a little bit about this. Um, if you didn't see that writing on, on my Facebook wall, Rivka Magic on Facebook, what I explained a little bit about was the reason we're talking about Yom Kippur now is because now is springtime, now is Easter, the resurrection, the rising up. And we're talking about Yom Kippur, which is the Day of Atonement, repenting for our sins, because we're saying, hey, if we can rise up now, 
be reborn and maintain this new form and really maintain this new innocence, our renewed innocence and purity. It's like a robe that we're putting on, a new robe, like a, an extra spirit. And if we can maintain this new form, we won't even need a Yom Kippur. We won't even need a Day of Atonement. They say that the holy priests would leave their old garments behind, never to wear the same ones again the next year. And this was a sign saying, we are so sure that we're not going to need that old form again because we are sticking to this new one. We are committing to this new form so strongly. We have no doubt to the point where we're going to expect we won't even need a day of atonement. We won't need to repent for any sins because we will not sin. That is ultimate faith. Ultimate no doubt consciousness. So seeing as between that Shabbat story, this past Shabbat, you know, uh, and up until fall for Yom Kippur. Right now we have this um, Scorpio full moon. So to me, how I'm connecting all of that is we're rising up, spring, rebirth, being reborn, reclaiming our innocence, our purity. Scorpio full moon is giving us a chance to fully dive into the ocean of our emotions to see what lies beneath the shadows so that we can go to the ultimate depth to heal whatever is there so that we can ensure we will maintain this new form, that we can really make the most of this rebirth so that we can make sure we're not leaving anything behind that needs to be healed. We're not leaving anything out. We're gonna go all the way deep, Scorpio full moon. I'm a Scorpio moon and my moon is in the seventh house. It's intense. So I can really relate to this seeing how I need to illuminate the darkest parts of myself so that I can do the best job with this rebirthing here, become the best me in this springtime so that I can most powerfully maintain this new self and not have to re repent for sins because I'm committing right now to not doing them, to not sinning. Personally, I do you know, I do feel that I'm not perfect and, I, and I'm not ready to have that no doubt consciousness. And I am um, welcoming Yom Kippur and the Day of Atonement. It's a holiday, holy day that I love because I'm celebrating it from a mystical perspective. As a kid, that's not how it was celebrated. I grew up uh, with Yom Kippur being something that was a little confusing to me and a little dark and even boring because Yom Kippur to me was going and throwing bread to the ducks and, you know, uh, repenting for my sins so it looked something like I would throw a piece of bread into the lake and say I hope my dad you know forgives me for uh you know what I did to my sister or you know I hope I don't get punished for this or for that and you know it was very disconnected from spirit for me as a little girl practicing Yom Kippur but now I see the day of atonement as something so mystical so magical and so great for example um it's tradition to fast on Yom Kippur and as a kid that's very hard to do <laughs> You don't want to do it. But as an adult, I've come to really love the practice of fasting. It's a magical thing. And I understand now that on Yom Kippur, the reason for fasting is because we, we try to bring our consciousness as close to God and as close to the angelic realm as possible so that we can become angels on earth. And they don't need food. And so we cleanse, we purify our vessels by not eating and by repenting for our sins, cleansing of our past so that we can embody more light and raise our frequency. That's magical to me. And as an adult, I, I appreciate that so much. So do I believe that we will need a, a Day of Atonement? We still need Yom Kippur? Hell yeah, I believe we still need that, that holy day. I believe it's a practice that can be done more than just uh, on the day it falls on in the fall time. But it's on that day for a reason, for sure. It's a ritual. It's a very powerful ritual and it, it's chosen to be at that time for a reason. But I'm saying this concept of purifying, of cleansing is one that lives within us always. It's an opportunity we have each moment to bring ourselves closer to the creator. And this is also represented by Arcanum 11 in the tarot, by the way, known as the Enchantress or Strength 11. Because when we purify ourselves, when, we, when our lifestyle is one of purification and detoxification, we can constantly seek to be closer to the creator by constantly maintaining a frequency of purity. We can do that in all moments. And the, the purer and clearer we are, 
the better of an antenna we have, the more space we have to be filled with light to receive divine transmission. We maintain connection to source when we bring our frequency to match that frequency of source, that holy frequency. It's the law of resonance. So Yom Kippur is like one day out of the year where we really specifically practice that in every single way as a united people, the Jewish people, and whoever else chooses to take part in such a holy practice. So it is a very special day, but again, this concept is always available to us. So I just want to say that between now and Yom Kippur is the time where, you know, we, between this rebirth and then needing to repent to maintain this new form, it's a time where we really want to dig deep. And so thank you, Scorpio Full Moon, for bringing us to our depths, showing us whatever is waiting there beneath the surface to be healed so that we can make the most of the springtime rebirth. And so that there's as little to repent for as possible at the time of Yom Kippur. So are you ready to heal whatever is lying there beneath the surface? Are you ready to go as deep as possible? Because in order to fully call in this experience, in order to fully support it as best as we can right now, what does that look like? It looks like crying out to the universe, saying, I'm ready. Bring it on. Every challenge is a chariot. I'm here to crystallize to actualize all of the knowledge and all the wisdom that I've cultivated so bring it on because I need I need the practice God bring it on give me the opportunity to heal as best as I can don't you think we asked for this we asked for this we signed up for this our soul signed up for this we we made this contract we said oh my goodness of course give me the Scorpio full moon yes please give me the Scorpio full moon don't give me anything else give me just what is perfect for my healing it's like we always push ourselves to the absolute limit so that we can make the most of our healing, you know? It's like the archer pulling back the, the bow so that the arrow can go farther. So we signed up for this Scorpio moon. So together we can assist in this process by welcoming it. It's inevitable, it's here, it's coming. We signed up for it, so let's welcome it and let's be ready for it and let's say, yes, bring on the Scorpio full moon. I'm ready to go as deep as possible with my healing so I don't leave anything out so I can rise up to my highest form and commit to sustaining this form beyond the springtime so that next year when I rise I rise higher and the year after that higher and ever ever higher so just to close up the activation reading here because we kind of went into went on to another path there this Scorpio moon is saying go really deep Dig really deep. What emotions have you been hiding? What have you been hiding from yourself? What have you been hiding from others? Expose it all. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable. Because when you rise up this springtime, or when you rise up after this healing of this moon, you wanna make sure that it's being initiated from the heart. You want to ride into this sun with that holy grail in your mind, in your heart, prioritizing the waters of the emotions that live within your heart. Don't ride up to that sun without that cup. Don't you forget that grail. Don't you forget that heart. Picture this guy without the cup, just a knight on a horse riding to the sun. What's the mission even for then? What, is, what does he even want to shine for? What is the sun even shining for? The sun is shining for the heart. You cannot forget why we're on this mission. You cannot forget, do not forget that cup, that grail. Again, horsemen and knights are thoughts. There are thoughts about whatever suit is being pulled. And this is cups, it's emotions, it's the heart. So don't forget the heart and what is most important as you ride toward the sun, toward your own illumination. Bring your highest light into this world and know that it can only be so when it's radiating from the heart. 
<laughs> All right, you're sitting on a rock here. So happy full moon, guys. Um, again, this reading is not about the moon, but the moon is used as a time measure to show that we are experiencing the fullness of the light behind all things right now, because the light behind the moon is the light back of everything. It's the light that's inside of your own heart. So this is not moon worship and it's not worship at all. Actually, it's about connecting to the archetypal alliance within your own self and seeing how they can guide you, how they can guide your path, how they can refine your thoughts and your strategy for moving ahead. Because there's always a perfect way. Whether you're struggling or not doesn't matter. What the cards do is they help to organize your thoughts. So whatever extraneous thoughts you have in your mind helps to eliminate those and pull out that which is most important. That's what they do. If you guys want to learn more about this archetypal alliance and how to connect with it inside of yourself, because it is inside all of us, uh, I did just come out with a book. It's now published on Amazon and it's called The Royal Path, Activating the Archetypal Alliance Within. So you can just search that on Amazon and there are ebook copies and print copies you can order. Or feel free to private message me and I can send you a copy of the book and you can purchase directly from me. It's a story about the tarot as the royal path as it was originally intended and it just kind of goes through the all of the the characters of the deck or the story and shows you how they're a part of you and how together we form an alliance us and these archetypes to bring more light into this world um, it doesn't go into heavy symbolism it's not all you know complicated and uh, in, intense and overloaded with uh, esotericism. It's really just a simple story to help anybody relate to these archetypes. Um, it's a lot about the virtues and how to embody the light of the virtues as that light is the original light of all of life and all of creation. So if you're interested, it's called The Royal Path, Activating the Archetypal Alliance Within. I'm still available for private readings, so please feel free to private message me if you're interested in that. It is a crazy time right now and a perfect time for a reading. So just to show you guys where I just did this reading from. Quite beautiful. In the canyon in Sedona, Arizona. So I am so excited to see how we all pull through with this uh, lesson right now how we're all gonna bring our heart into the radiance that we shine into the world as we reemerge, as we pick the pieces back up from everything we've been going through globally, this crisis and the quarantine coming back out. And I can't wait to see the new expressions that everybody brings. I can't wait to see how deeply people have gotten in touch with their hearts and are willing to bring that out into the world now. To not go back to how things were, but to look ahead and create a world as a projection of what is truly inside our hearts. That treasure that we can uncover when we remove the shadows and when we do the work which the Scorpio full moon is offering us. So I'm excited. Thank you all for doing your part and I'll see you next week for the final quarter activation. Peace.